consuming milk, you're better off not doing it. If you need something along those lines, then think about soy milk, rice milk, almond milk, things along those lines, or goat milk. But again, the humans are, are I believe, are the only species that consume the dairy of another species. And when it comes to the stability and the health of the Maasai, another aspect of that, aside from the genetic ad adaptation, is also that they are very active. And if you really want to strengthen bones, it takes exercise to strengthen bones. Mm -hmm. uh, cultures that live on vegetables, leafy greens, and do a lot of exercise have stronger bones than cultures that depend on dairy. One of the, there are two major killers in our country today. The first is cardiovascular. And when you talk about cardiovascular disease, the first one that comes up is hypertension. And from that perspective, what creates hypertension is stress. So I have a method and technique that I share with people that you can't do while you're driving. You put your hands over your ears and you tilt your head. Now, what that does is it changes the way you hear things and it changes the way you see things, okay? Because when you tilt your head, things will fall out of your peripheral vision and new things will come into your vision. And what is stress but the way that you respond to what you see and hear? And all of this is based on your subconscious concepts that you maintain about self. I work from the position that all diseases are the result of conflict between your subconscious expectations of who you think you're supposed to be and your conscious desire of who you want to be. And therein lies the beginning of disease, conflict. One of the interesting things that stress does is that it depletes your vitamins and your minerals, specifically calcium, which is interesting because calcium is symbolic of strength. And when your calcium is depleted, it creates an imbalance between sodium and potassium. When that happens, your body will begin to retain fluid. This is one of the reasons why people under stress will all, almost overnight seem to gain 5 to 15 pounds of weight, and it's all water retention. That will put pressure on the arterial system, elevating blood pressure. One of the ways to get rid of elevated blood pressure or excess fluid, if you have a tendency to retain fluid, potassium, B6, diuretic herbs like uh, uh, celery seed, Uva ursa, parsley, watermelon seed, all of these, and, and eat lots of watermelons, but not late at night. And you will get rid of lots of fluid. And some of us can attest getting up two, three times during the night. <laughs> nice dessert of watermelon. And one of the ways that, that blood pressure is regulated in the body, you have what is called a negative feedback system. There are nerve endings in your arterial walls that sense when the pressure is going up, sends a message to the brain. Brain, in turn, sends electrical impulses down your nerve lines to tell the cells that make up the muscles and the heart to relax, thus lowering the blood pressure. But remember that we've had the stress-depleting minerals, and it creates an imbalance in sodium and potassium. And what happens is that there is a breakdown in electrical communication. I would have you think of minerals as light switches. This evening, if you know if you spend all day out, you go home this evening, you walk into a room, it's dark. You know the electricity is there, you have to flick the light. You flick the switch, the lights illuminate. The electricity is there, the impulses are there. But if you do not have an adequate amount of minerals, then the muscles are not going to get the message and they will not be able to lower the tension. So by bringing in calcium and magnesium, you now, plus the potassium for the balance of the fluids, you now have restored the electrolytes, your body will begin to respond. To keep you mellow, now that we've got the blood pressure down, I use herbs like hops, valerian, skullcap, passiflora, wild lettuce. All of these are great nervines and tranquilizers. Also in my formulas, I use garlic and cayenne and apple pectin. A lot of people do not know that apple pectin has four wonderful qualities. One, it will regulate blood pressure. It regulates the bowels. It regulates cholesterol. It has electromagnetic properties, much like cilantro, so you can use it as a detoxifier, which is also vitally important for excellent health. When it comes to cayenne, it is wonderful. You should all keep it on your kitchen table as a condiment. 
If you ever feel that you're having a heart attack, you can put it under your tongue. It will equalize your blood pressure. If you're chopping your vegetables and you decide to add some, you know, thumb or <laughs> finger into the salad, <laughs> throw some cayenne on there, you'll stop the bleeding. And uh, should you guys go, when you're going to Canada, if you go skiing ever during the winter, put cayenne in your shoes, you'll keep your feet warm. When it comes to garlic, garlic is wonderful. You know it's a great antibiotic. You know it's a great for um, the heart as well as cholesterol. I recommend that everybody eats plenty of garlic, so much that it actually permeates the body. That way no one will get near you, you won't get sick, you won't get sores. <laughs> so garlic is good. So these are the things that will actually lower blood pressure. The potassium, the B6, your diuretic herbs, calcium, magnesium, your tranquilizing herbs, Apple a day, keeps the doctor away, garlic cayenne. Another thing that comes up in cardiovascular disease is high cholesterol. And what's interesting about that differently is that the approach to dealing with high cholesterol these days is red yeast rice as well, you know, from the, from the natural perspective, plus your Lipitors and Crestors and your statin drugs. The catch-22 with those is that they block the liver from manufacturing cholesterol. So it's really not a very healthy approach. And symbolically, clogged arteries, man, man has created a diet that is saturated with fats, we're using trans fats, we're consuming hydrogenated fats and oils, and all of these will have a tendency to clog up the body. And when you take into consideration that 25% of all of the oxygen, all of the air you bring into your body, 25% of the oxygen is sent to your brain. And it's interesting because cardiovascular disease, high cholesterol is this, you know, part of the, the killer of the cardiovascular disease realm. Blood is symbolic of spirit. There's no spirit getting to the mind. And Alzheimer's is on the increase, I forget what the projections are, but I think by 2015, 50 million of us kids are going to have Alzheimer's. Because man is creating foods that are loaded in corn syrup solids, the hydrogenated fats, the body tries to protect itself by creating even more fat. And I'll explain that when we get into how the, the body works and form, as far as a detoxification process goes. So what is happening is that, that we are getting diminished nutrients to the brain, not to mention the fact that if you're eating the regular American diet, you already have depleted nutrients and you're not getting what you need. If you're dealing with high cholesterol, what the body would use is choline, inositol, niacin, methionine, unsaturated fatty acids, lecithin. And what's interesting is that when you talk about fats, you see all of these products, no fat, low fat. The reality is you need fat to get rid of fat. Mm -hmm. So doing these no fat diets are really unhealthy. Not only that, but the mitochondria, which manufactures your insulin, survives on fat. Fat is a fuel for the body. If there's hardening of the arteries, you want to use extra magnesium and vitamin D. The reason being is that the reason your body develops plaque hardening of the arteries is twofold. Number one, they never tell you the value of cholesterol, which is why the red yeast rice, the Lipitor, Crestor are so dangerous, because you need cholesterol. Your 50 trillion, 100 trillion cells require cholesterol for cellular integrity. You need cholesterol to manufacture your hormones. So if you're having menopausal issues that you cannot get under control, and what they're seeing in the health food stores is that the supplements are not working the way they used to work because more and more people are on these cholesterol-suppressing drugs. And so the hormones are not being manufactured. They're also seeing an increase in kidney stones, bone spurs, and spinal stenosis. Why? Because you 